Hello everybody, I'm here today with Lee Strickland from Strickland Marine Insurance Agency, Inc. And today we're going to talk about boat insurance and why and if you need it and how that works into the boat purchase process. So, Lee, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, your business that you have here. Well, uh, my father started uh, his first insurance agency back in the 60s. He um, quickly made a lot of inroads in Charleston. And uh, by the 80s, he had uh, bought and sold or, or grown and sold a couple of agencies and had uh, been writing most of the uh, car dealerships in town. And uh, by virtue of that, you know, a lot of car dealerships and whatnot, owners and contractors, they tend to have yachts. So he and I, uh, you know, we were always hunters and fishermen growing up together. He's from Loris. And I grew up right here in, on James Allen in Charleston. And uh, so he and I did a lot of fishing and boating and hunting and whatnot growing up. So at one time or another, he had a sport fisher at pretty much every marina town, fishing all the tournaments together. And we even ran charters together in the summers when I was in college. So okay. in the mid 80s, he just realized that there was a niche and, uh, for marine insurance. Nobody was really specializing in it. It was less regulated, less understood, uh, uh, specialty in, the marine, in, in insurance. And so, he, he got a lot of name recognition for professionalizing the recreational marine insurance industry and started to write marinas and boat dealerships and whatnot. So by the time Hurricane Hugo came around, he had most of the marinas around here insured. We uh, started a new agency together, carrying on the family tradition as father and son, and we've been specializing in marine insurance ever since. Well, nice. So now you are an agency and not an insurance company, right? Can you tell that's me a little right. bit about the difference between those that's two? That's right. Well, that's, that's a great question because a lot of people don't understand the difference and uh, uh, they think that, you know, their insurance agent is the company. Well, and that's sort of the case when you've got captive agents uh, like State Farm, Allstate. <clears throat> the State Farm agent is only allowed to write with State Farm and they truly are an agent of State Farm. With us, we're we're a uh, independent insurance agency and, and 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 insurance brokers. We're not a captive agent, so we're not tied down to any one insurance company. We do have um, direct uh, agency contracts with uh, various insurance companies, where we do act as the agent for the insurance company, uh, but we also act as brokers and go to wholesalers and and even go to London and uh, provide. Uh, insurance from a, v a variety of sources. We work with probably 40 different carriers or more insurance carriers. And so the difference being uh, between the agency being us and, and the insurance company, the, the agent, he collects premium for the insurance policy. He doesn't keep the premium. He sends that to the insurance company. The insurance company then sends back a a commission to the agent for producing the policy. So we go through an insurance agency like yourself and my boat sinks out in Charleston Bay. Do I contact you or do I contact the insurance company that you connected me with? Well, some insurance companies prefer that you contract, uh, contact them directly for claims, like Travelers, for example. They have a 24-hour claims line and, and in some cases, uh, say it happens over the weekend, it might be more expeditious for you to do that. but. But we always encourage our clients to call us directly and we'll help handle the claim form, we'll submit the claim. And in some cases, we do say also call the travelers directly, for example. But there are a lot of other carriers that we represent. And in, such, in a lot of cases, it's, it's better for us to you know, help you handle the claim. And, and you know, we don't have authority over the claims, but we always try to help our insureds and make sure that they're getting a fair treatment from the insurance company. And in most cases, we don't have a problem with claims anyway, but it's, it's nice to have a local agent when you're in a situation like that dealing with an insurance company, you know, w without even getting started on something like that. When you have a claim, say you're a million dollar boat sinks, you're already feeling pretty intimidated by the situation. So okay. we try to hold the hand. When you're doing the boat purchase process, uh, like when you buy a car, you can just go get your insurance that same day. Does it kind of work the same way for when you're purchasing a a fairly expensive boat like can I just call you up and say hey I'm getting ready to close on this deal can I have insurance today well it depends on a lot of factors okay okay so cars and homes that they don't generally go to the Bahamas too much you know like yeah. a boat might <laughs> the the speed with which you can get insurance bound okay it's not just a function of the size of the boat it's a function of which uh, uh, I'd say boilerplate or cookie cutter policies 
are available for the complexity of that risk. So okay. if it's a run of the mill, 25 foot bay boat, we can turn those around very quickly. I mean, it takes a matter of five minutes to get a quote. We could, we could literally have the thing bound within the hour. And we do that for a lot of boat dealerships. They call mm -hmm. us, they've got a sale pending. The people, you know, they wanna know how much the insurance is gonna cost. A lot of times we bind it before they even leave the dealership with the boat. So that happens a lot. And in some cases that might be a $150,000, $200,000 boat. Now, if it gets more complex and they want, um, you know, the, the boat's gonna be kept in Florida during hurricane season and they're not gonna be with it, then what happens is the market gets narrowed down, market being the, the available number of insurance companies that are willing to take that risk. Narrows it down, the more and more complex it gets. Uh, and, and so with complexity comes more work for us. Because what we do is we shop all the markets for the, insur for the prospective insured. Mm -hmm. We go to all the different insurance companies and find them the best deal for the best fit with a carrier that's willing to take that risk on. Excellent. Okay, so, th so that brings up a, a good point um, on rates because nobody likes paying insurance rates. They just like the insurance to be there when they actually sink the boat. So that's right. Is there anything <laughs> that the uh, pr uh, prospective insured could do to reduce that rate? Like for instance, U.S. Coast Guard captain's courses, ASA courses, prior ownership? All of the above. All of the above. The more ownership or operating experience you have, the better. And it's very important to put it all down. Okay. You know, some guys, if they've owned 20 boats and they stop after three, nope, go ahead and tell me all 20 of them. Because if there's something other else about your account, about your risk that's difficult mm -hmm. or untenable for the insurance company, they may say, well, I'll do it because this guy is a helicopter pilot and he's owned 25 boats. They look at your overall risk okay. and, and the, prof the picture that you paint. They'll look at your credit score. They'll look at your age. They'll look at whether you've had any losses. Some only look five years, some look at your whole history. Um, sometimes uh, losses in, in other kinds of insurance might even affect you. Now on um, areas, right? Because uh, it's kind of unusual, I guess, to say, I, I want to be insured for my yacht all the way around the world, right? So they uh, do that in navigational areas, is that correct? That's right. All right, so now, how do they usually do that? Like, what is a navigational area? Is that the East Coast? Is that the East Coast Bahamas usually? Or is that just dictated by each individual circumstance? It depends on the boat and it depends on the carrier. Okay. Okay. They, all the different insurance carriers have different um, uh, boilerplate options for navigational warranties or navigational areas. Depending on the kind of boat, <clears throat> different navigational areas will be options. So you may have, uh, with a yacht, you may have um, uh, Maine to, um, uh, to around uh, Texas, or you may have Maine to the Florida Georgia line, or you may have, uh, uh, you may have uh, the Bahamas included, or you may have to endorse the Bahamas on, et cetera. So, okay, and is it hard to change those navigation areas? Say if I have from, uh, Maine to Texas, and then um, I come back and tell you, oh, I want to go to the Bahamas this time. Is, is that usually pretty difficult to change, or is that coming easy? Uh, I, I would say in general, it's it's fairly easy to change. It's a routine, something we do all day long, every day sort of thing. But uh, again, it depends on a lot of other factors. For example, most of your carriers don't like for you to be uh, south of the Georgia, Florida line during hurricane season. Right. So now as the, as the value of the boat goes up and, you know, if it's a million dollar yacht, the carriers that are, that have an appetite for uh, that kind of risk are uh, more lenient with navigation for luxury yachts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And especially if the luxury yacht has a paid captain, for example, uh, the availability is going to, again, be based on the risk and the characteristics of the owner. Okay, and then, um, so the, I guess the types of, I don't know if it's necessarily types of insurance, but you have like agreed value for a boat and then you have the replacement cost. Is that generically right? Uh, more commonly, you would have agreed value or uh, actual cash value, ACV. Okay. So replacement cost is available with some carriers. It's not a very commonly um, purchased product. And, um, uh, I, I would say that by and large, the, the most common product that we sell and that we uh, prefer to sell is agreed value. 
where agreed value means that you and the insurance carrier agree on the value of the vessel up front so that during the policy period, if it sinks, that's, uh, that's the value that you get. Of course, there are exceptions to that rule. There are, you know, you gotta read your policy language. There may be uh, deductibles, uh, there may, well, there are always gonna be deductibles. There may be, um, uh, exclu- there are always gonna be some exclusions mm-hmm. and some exceptions. For example, on an agreed value policy, even though the policy form on the face value says agreed value, you know, uh, certain items like canvases and sales, and in some cases, outboard motors are going to be depreciated. Mm-hmm. So that's where you want to make sure that your agent, uh, you discuss with, you know, with your agent whether or not, uh, if you have an agreed value policy, whether or not th- something important like an, uh, an outboard motor, which in a lot of cases can be half the value of the boat or more, uh, it, whether it's depreciated or whether it is also agreed value. I know that each insurance company is going to be different, have different stipulations, but is there, I guess, some things that you recommend to all that your insurers that come through your agency, uh, maybe as far as like uh, salvage insurance or consequential damage claims? Or if you, generally speaking, everything I say is generally speaking, because every every insurance carrier's policy is different. It's not like homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance, they have standardized HO forms that are filed with the state. Uh, every different insurance company's policy form is different from the next. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, but by and large, in general, most hull coverage is policy, policies that have hull coverage, full coverage for the hull and p which is liability, they're going to include wreck removal and salvage. Okay. Okay. At least up to the value of the hull. Now, a lot of people call in and they want liability only insurance. And what they may not realize is that uh, in some cases, liability only insurance has a very low limit for wreck removal or salvage or none, Hmm. no coverage at all. And so we advise a lot of our marina clients, we insure marinas, uh, to make sure that their tenants who are boat owners carry full, you know, hull and P&I with full wreck removal and salvage. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I'd rather have it anyway myself, but yeah. I know that everybody can make that choice. Well, you'd be surprised how many people just want the liability insurance because they just, they just want to, they, they don't care if they lose the hull. Yeah. But they don't think about all the other other things they could get into. Uh, so, like if a boat sinks in a marina and there's no salvage coverage uh, to remove it from the water. Yeah, somebody's going to have to pay to get that out of there. Somebody's going to have to pay. and. The, insur- the, the marina can't really insure somebody else's property in a space that they don't actually own, mm-hmm. the, the water. So you were talking about uh, hurricane season, for example, being south of the uh, Georgia-Florida line. Um, so named storms, uh, they're, how does that usually work? Is that just a higher deductible that normally gets placed on insurance, or does insurance companies dictate different things? The latter is, is the truth, and it's always going to be the truth without right. any question. It's always different. There are generally um, two different kinds of wind-related deductibles or storm-related deductibles on a boat policy. There's going to be a wind wind deductible, okay? Now, if it just says it's a wind or windstorm deductible, that could be any kind of wind, okay? But then there's a named windstorm deductible, and a named windstorm deductible is... um, uh, Damage, it relates to damage caused by a storm that's been given a name by NOAA. Okay. Or the National Weather Service. Uh, so th- there's, that sounds like a subtle difference, but it can be a substantial difference. Now, these days it seems like uh, NOAA or NWS is naming pretty much every storm that comes along. A snowstorm, whatever it is. <laughs> it used to not be that way. Yeah. So I, I guess the difference between wind storm reductible and name wind storm reductible, while it used to be a substantial difference is becoming less and less substantial because they're naming every storm. Yeah, it seemed like they used to just name like hurricanes and now That's it's, right. you know, anything over 35 knots, they start putting names on it, I think. Yeah, well, <laughs> some some uh, some of the uh, windstorm deductible language will specify uh, tropical storm, hurricane, or nor'easter. Mm. Okay. Uh, and some will say a storm that's give, been given a name by the National Weather Service or then uh, your typical uh, Regular windstorm deductible which doesn't specify anything, just windstorm. Uh, is there anything else you think I might have forgotten about how insurance works for uh, boats in general? 
Well, I wanted to explain a little bit more about agreed value versus okay, ACV. Please. So a actual cash value, a lot of people are going to know this and a lot of people aren't. Yeah. Um, actual cash value, one of the reasons why I try to steer people away from that, uh, avoid doing so, because ACV means, it's, bottom line, it's going to de be depreciated. So if you, you know, even though your face value on your policy may say $50,000, if you've had the insurance for on a new boat or uh, or or uh, if, if it's a car or whatever it's on, if, on a new boat if you got $50,000 face value and it's ACV coverage and you've had the boat for 11 months before it sinks then there's 11 months of depreciation hmm. okay and uh, I don't ever really like to want to be in a position where an insured takes that as a surprise because like you said nobody really wants to pay the including myself nobody wants to pay the premium when they're having to buy it and most people, including myself, when I buy products, I don't necessarily remember all of the things right. that somebody told me when they were selling something. Yeah, you're going to so put it in a drawer and forget all about it. Right. You buy it, you forget about it, and you say, well, it's supposed to cover everything. <laughs> and then, so now, with that being said, it's important to point out that in some cases, ACV coverage is the only thing that's available. And for some people, it's the only thing that's affordable. Okay. It's a lot cheaper. So that's normally, oh, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So it's normally a cheaper rate? It's less rate? expensive because it's inferior coverage in most cases. Uh, and But in some cases, especially with older boats, it's going to be the only coverage that you're going to be able to find. But read your insurance policy. Yeah. It's, it's, in a lot of cases, it's not going to be that long. And in some cases, it's even written in plain English. Now, in some cases, it's written in some English that's pretty hard to understand. <laughs> Uh, and you may want to call your agent and, and go through some of those things. And in some cases, your agent may have to call and get the answer for you. But uh, it's always a good idea. Um, we help people do that. We help people make sure that they understand what they have. And as an agent, instead of a single company, you basically compete, for instance, my policy with right. all the insurance companies, right? That's exactly what we do. So you're saving, you're basically saving me from calling 40 odd insurance companies That's myself. Right. We're doing the work for you. Excellent. Yeah. So we, we usually hit anywhere from three to 12 different companies, usually between eight and 10 for any given risk. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you for their insurance needs, how would they do that? Well, they can go to our website at https uh, forward slash forward slash stricklandmarineinsurance.com. Okay. Uh, they can also, we, we have a few different URLs to make it simple on people. We also have just stricklandmarine.net. You type that in your browser and you go. Uh, they can email us um, at uh, from the website or the, on our website. They can go to a quote request page. That quote request page is made for the average boat or yacht. It's not made for passenger vessels, marinas, boat dealers, ships, and that sort of thing. But so that's the third option you call us. Okay. Uh, uh, if you're local, we've got a, you know, our phone number is 843-795-1000. Easy to remember. Uh, if you're remote, we have an 800 number. It's 800-446-1862. And then, of course, I always make myself available to all of our customers, large or small, by cell phone anytime. That's 843-509-2526. If you ever need any heavy lifting, you call me. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I had a good time here with Lee Strickland today, and he has helped me out with my insurance, uh, him and his agency, uh, got me taken care of with YOLO for our 42-foot and Terry's. And again, thanks for the interview. Thank you. It was good to see you.